for old fashioned recipes and your garden and needs a while sipping on Kentucky bourbon. Sit right back in your big red hat, we're taking rural back from the urban. Listen to the stories where Kentucky is proud, share the giggles with all of your friends. You all are tuned in to Friends Drifting. Hi, I'm Joyce. Welcome to the fifth episode of Friends Drift In, your connection to the farm to table movement in Eastern Kentucky. Today I'm really excited. It's July. The honeysuckle are blooming. The mint is cooling us off in this sweltering heat. But I'm here to tell you that we're ready for some big hospitality at Friends Drift In. I first met our guest today, Chef Jeremy Ashby, almost a year ago. He is the executive chef of Azer Restaurant and Patio in Lexington, Kentucky. He's the co-host of Sunny Side Up Radio, which is aired on Saturdays at 11 o'clock. You can catch that on the internet. He talks about farm to table movement. He talks about local food issues and he advocates Kentucky Proud and Kentucky agriculture. Well, today we're talking about Food. Of Good course. food. What we're always talking about. And I'm going to let Ashby cook something up. Well, I'm here to cook and here to have a lot of fun. And thank you very, very much for having me. This is a great opportunity. And I love the drive down here. It was very, very scenic. And, you know, it took a little while to get here, but, you know, I'm used to it. I got to see a little bit of Kentucky that I'm, you know, not as familiar with. I see a lot of food coming from this area, a lot of very, very wonderful things. And I'm here to, you know, do a little cooking with you guys. I'd like to do some frog legs, which. Frog legs. Around, you know, I, I call them jumpers. Jeremy's That's right. jumpers. That's right, Jeremy's jumpers. <laughs> and then uh, fried green tomatoes. Uh, we're going to stack that with the little country ham and cream cheese that are whipped together. You know, really salty, creamy, gooey, yummy. You know, fried green You're tomatoes are just... My, you just sing it my song. Yeah, yeah. Fried green tomatoes are just, you know, comfort food. Frog legs are something that I think, you know, is really prominent in the American South. And if it's not, yes. it's in yes. France. So it's something that's not usually done. I'd like to kind of go through how that process works. It's kind of like frying chicken, it is. but fun. It's a little well, bit more different. Well, no. Here in Appalachia, go ahead. Here in Appalachia, we are uh, very much a part of frog gigging, very much a part of our culture oh, yeah. on, in a hot July afternoon. Mm -hmm. Be aware that you have to have a license to frog gig. There is a limit <laughs> of 12 frogs per day. I think we broke that. <laughs> Frog legs are available locally mm -hmm. at our, our grocery store, seven ninety nine a pound. So it pays to go out and go gigging. That sounds like uh, <laughs> it would actually. That's uh, seven ninety nine a pound. It's, it took me uh, a lot of money to fill up on frog legs. But anyway, I like this sauce that we're gonna do. It's called. Uh, it's just a peach chutney. Now usually peach chutneys are a thick uh, mixture, a little bit darker uh, preserve that that we we or use a lot in the South. And, right. You know, came from peach India. Season. But uh, the one I like to do is a little bit, uh, a little bit saucier, lighter in color, because we're going to use peaches that are just about ripe, not quite. They're a little bit firm, as you can see, and you know, have, don't yep. have quite yep. the gift. These are like a South Carolina white peach. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. happens is, like, if you have a little firmer peach when the, through the cooking process, you end up with a peach that's not just mush or jam. Right. You've got a little texture, a little bit of color. It makes for a great plate presentation. Plus you get that one bite of like peach that's just, you know, bam, right in your mouth, right? So the first thing we got to do is, is make some chutney. I like to start with a little bit of red onion um, and not very much, just a simple little dice. I like to go from the side, just make a few little swipes on up and then um, a little bit this way as well. And don't have to worry about nice knife cuts. A little bit of chunk is good. It gives light textures to your, to your dish. So a little red onion. Red onion gives it a little bit of bite. Oh, it certainly does. It's just uh, a little bit more interesting than a white onion, even though I love white onions. But uh, adds great color, a little bit firmer, stronger flavor. So a little onion into your pan. And next thing that um, I like to use in this dish is, is ginger. Now, speaking of, say, Indian cuisine and classic chutneys, Ginger is kind of commonplace. We, we've been talking about ginger on the show several times. I mm -hmm. think it's a really nice peppery taste. Right. It's easily, you can get it at the grocery store. It's not hard to find. They mm -hmm. keep it down in a bin underneath most of the produce. But if you ask the produce people, they can tell you where it is. Yeah, and it lasts a long time too. It doesn't take too much to go around the block, so you to speak. You can throw a little sand on it in a pot and it'll sprout. Cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> Well, I like to square it off a little bit. Another way to, to, to actually peel the ginger is to use a spoon. And this actually has a little bit better yield. If you just scrape it on the side, 
you know, for today we're just going to wing it and crash right through this. So square it off a little bit. We'll go back and use these for tea, which maybe we could yeah, you know, we've got talk some, about we've a little got, bit we've later. We've got some ginger tea coming up mm -hmm. with uh, some honeysuckle that we did with the sweet syrup, simple mm -hmm. syrup. Charlie and I were out picking honeysuckle for Chef Jeremy Ashby last night at 8 o'clock up I, on Ford Mountain. I will so put you to work. Us, I, I was not doing anything illegal. I was, <laughs> I was picking honeysuckle. We like to put you to work. We have to have the freshest stuff, right? So <laughs> Absolutely. Come right in from the garden. So dice your ginger, a uh, little julienne, then a small dice is fine. If you want, you can use a grater too, like a cheese grater. That does a nice job with your ginger. So a little ginger, a little onion in the pan, uh, ready to go. Then peaches, that's the, the main ingredient, right? right? And uh, if you want to peel a peach, you could do a little, what we call a mondaire concasse. And, you do know, what? The top. It's a little French term. You know, we Say it again. Mondaire concasse. <laughs> you just do a little X cut on the top and then drop it in boiling water. And then, you know, shock it in cold water. And then well, the that's skin what you do right when off. you're canning. That's, yeah. that's how you get the peel off. I've, exactly. I've got you now. So we're just going to, we're going to skip that part because, I don't know, there's something about some peach skin. You know, I'm, I'm really big on bold flavors and textures. I think it adds a lot to it. It so does. We'll use uh, about two peaches. You guys can use more depending on if you want to have some left over. We're just going to bust out enough for this recipe. So, uh, and we're talking about just kind of rough rough cuts here you know nothing nothing too small want those big chunks of peaches in there so just a little small julienne actually it's not really a julienne but just a nice little cut we'll get these all into the pot you notice how easy this is we're just throwing stuff in there i don't even have it on the stove yet so you can do all this ahead of time or just do it like i am we're doing it right you on camera you just swing right through there well it takes a little bit of a little bit of work now i cannot work with the pepper without putting uh Mm -hmm. Gloves on my hands. They burn me up. What kind of pepper are you using? Well, this is more like a Thai, Thai pepper. Mm -hmm. uh, it's close to a shishito. Uh, it's a little bit spicy. It's, it's actually a breed of serrano. Okay. You ever heard of serrano Serranos peppers? we can get here at the store and sometimes we can get jalapenos. Jalapenos jalapeno is, work. I like jalapenos a lot. This one's got a little bit more of a bite to it. Jalapenos work great. Seeding it's easy. Just kind of roll the pepper back and do a nice little slice. And you want to get rid of those puppies because they will yeah, light they, it yes, up. Yes, they will. So once again, rough little chop and uh, into your little pot. Now, uh, for color, you can use a little bit of red pepper. And then all oh, inside's great flavor as well, you know. Always fresh peppers. Fresh peppers, California Wonders are my favorite. They're about to come on. They've been setting this, this week. I was out checking the garden, and I should have California Wonders in about, oh, another eight to ten days. So I'm really excited about that. Well, I can't wait to try some. Anyway, a little bit of pepper. This is kind of filling up nicely. Lots of good colors here, too. You can tell there's going to be a lot of flavors. Now, um, don't measure this. Just get in there and do it. A little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar. I don't know, a couple of tablespoons is really all you need. You don't want much liquid because the liquid comes from the peaches. So I didn't even use all of that, just a little. And then uh, white sugar, equal parts white pure sugar. Pure cane sugar. We're very much about pure cane sugar and not beet sugar. Always look for the pure cane label. Well, that sounds good to me. <laughs> so white sugar along with equal parts brown sugar. And the brown sugar adds a nice amber, helps the recipe kind of come together a little bit quicker. So Would the peaches. Would sorghum have been too... Uh, too, too heavy for this, you think? Oh, not in terms of flavor and eating. Just for presentation, though, it would make it really dark. And I like those bright, bright vibrant colors. colors. Yeah. So this goes on the pot, and we're going to let it boil down for probably 20 to 30 minutes okay. before it's ready to plate. After that, you can reserve it, or we'll use it for our dish. So we'll stick that on back here. OK. Next up, we'll kind of clean our area and talk a little bit about the country ham whipped cream cheese, which this is uh, something I've been using for a while. It's kind of like uh, one of those things I used to see on the table a lot at, for um, you know party dips, right? You know, cheese balls and whatnot. And there's just nothing like uh, green tomatoes and now, cream now country ham. And, when we talk about country ham, we're talking salty. Yeah. So, how does that work, Jeremy? You're starting to do some of your own. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Your own curing. We've been I've watching you 12, build your coffin boxes. Twelve hams sitting in an attic right now, and they are salty. We took uh, it's like twelve hundred pounds of salt, and sugar, and pepper, 
and uh, built a coffin box and let those cure for about a, six weeks. Then wow. pulled them out and resalted them and hung them. And wow. it's a great process. This is this is your pretty typical salty country ham. Got to try it out here. Tell me if you approve, because you know, down here this is real country ham territory. You know, well, you I think know, it does I a like good it job. Fried with a little crust on the end, but <laughs> other than that, it's pretty good. Pretty tasty, huh? So rough chop this. The mixer is going to do the rest of the work for us. Uh, not a big deal. Run your knife through it a couple times. Uh, I like to use a lot of it for this recipe. How fluid your your wrist is. No, we can talk about that too. Uh, you know, when in terms of the knives and knife technique, I like to imagine this is like that that bar that holds train wheels together. And you know, when your when your train starts moving, it's like you know, chug it, 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 and it starts moving this way. And if that you can, is cool. I never really thought about it, but yeah, that, that imagine might, that that would that might help me. And right. my, my knife skills are atrocious. Lift the back, pull the tip backwards, mm -hmm. and then push down. So if you can get that motion in your head and just keep working it, in like two weeks, you're going to be flying through stuff. <laughs> chug it, chug it, chug it. I chug think it, I can. I think I can. I think I can. Little engine that could. That's how I was in culinary school. Just a little engine. Just like, Jeremy, we, we taught you how to do this so many times. And you just, you mess it up. How much so, ham we got there? What, a couple? Cup? This is probably like, yeah, this is probably a cup and a half or yeah. so. Um, you know, have fun with it. But the biggest thing is we're going to go and just put this into the bowl of the mixer. Yeah. And there's really nothing special about this, you know. Right in the bowl of the mixer with the cream cheese. And we've softened that up before you... Before y'all got here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you get out of the fridge for a little bit, that's fine. It just, uh, the mixer will do a lot of the work for you though. Right. If you want to beat it by hand, I suggest getting it uh, room temperature for a little while. So big glob big of chunk. cream cheese. Big chunk. Then we'll go right into this mixer back here. Always put the lock on. So country ham along with the cream cheese into the bowl of the mixer. Make sure you put the lock on, start it on slow at first, and we'll just kind of come back to it as it starts to whip up. It'll get a little air in it too, it makes it lighter and fluffier. All right. So next up, it's green tomato time. Ah. Maters. Green tomatoes. Maters. White Wonders is the uh, the official green tomato that I'm growing this year. What, do you have a particular variety that you like? Not particular. We don't get too many uh, descriptions on the varieties. You know, we just ask for green tomatoes, that's what comes in. Uh, but these look like they'll do for us. I mean, from <laughs> <laughs> this well, we'll call them white, white, white wonders. wonders. White yeah. wonders. So the thing about green tomatoes is you don't want to go too thin and you don't want to go too thick. They got to be the right texture. They got to hold up in the skillet long enough to where when you're frying the green tomato, it actually lets some of that natural sugar come right. out. Right. And that kind of right. makes it a little bit sweet on the undertone. So mm -hmm. I like going for about that size. What do you think that is? Uh, I don't know. Or so? Real pretty. Not much of a, uh, the, the mucus sac there is mm -hmm. not too big, so they'll stay crisp. Right. You use most of it. These little ends don't bother me. You can take them out if you want to. We'll do uh, one more tomato worth. Now, every chef has, you know, a few little secrets, right? Right. And I do guess. Do you have secrets? <laughs> <laughs> one or two. <laughs> That's a different episode. So um, one thing I like to do with these green tomatoes is make a, a little spice mixture for when they come out of the skillet. Sure. And what it is is a little equal parts mixture of just black pepper. Black pepper. White sugar. Okay. Equal parts. All right. Pure cane sugar. And then uh, salt. That was salt. This is the sugar, right? And then also cumin. So. Yeah. <laughs> a little mix up there. You can smell how fragrant it is. Oh cumin. man, um, yeah, it gives it almost that chili pepper, mm -hmm. you know, chili powder taste. That's good stuff. Down. And then egg wash is what you need, really, for, for... Everybody knows egg wash down here. We egg wash everything. Right. So we'll bring that over here and make some. A couple eggs, a little bit of milk. Now on your chef tips, mm -hmm. on, your, on your sunny side up website, you have what they call chef tips. Yes. And you talk about... Cracking the egg. That's a great tip. We, I want to talk about it. <laughs> Everybody makes the, the mistake of cracking it on the side of your skillet and into the skillet or into whatever you're doing. Bad idea. What happens is if you poke it on the side, it puts those little shards into the egg and you got to sit around and pick them out, right? That's no fun. So go to a flat surface. And if you notice, every time it just comes out clean. 
So flat surfaces for breaking eggs. We'll do it. Nice, huh? There you go. Anyway, that with a little bit of, uh, of milk. And a little fork will take care of it. Just lightly whip it. Just skin the old egg, just like you were making scrambled eggs. Oh, yeah. No big Love deal. Up. No big deal at all. Drop that over here. And now we're ready to kind of fry a little bit. Uh, you've had your skillets going, so they're already hot. Oh, they're already now, hot. Now, we, this is a big gag going on, friends, drift in. How do you tell if the skillet is hot enough? Well, what I do is just sprinkle a little flour in there and see. Oh, but, no, I'm not doing the flour thing, so. Yeah. Yeah. So if you just, like, you know, drop it in there, you can kind of see if it's sizzling, which is just starting to sizzle. We're going to go ahead and turn up our heat just a little bit because we want to get a little scald. That's the wrong one. There you go. Yeah. Let that warm up for a second. Right. And then uh, we got to talk about flour. Flour is essential. What flour are you using today? I can't tell you what's in this. Oh, is it no, a secret, Ashby? Anyway, salt, pepper, flour, <laughs> a few little... Did you use a, a all-purpose or did you use a self rising This is an all-purpose. Okay. You know, 11, 12 herbs and seasonings, you know, kind of like somebody else we know. Yeah. But that point, Kentucky fried, huh? That's right. <laughs> It's real easy now, at this point, tomatoes. Are you, you going to put it in there first or are you going to put it in the egg wash I'm just first? This do... is a big controversy in culinary world. Oh, really? It is. Well, you know, if you go egg wash first and flour, they're a little bit softer. Yeah. If you want to get a double breading on them, you know, flour and then egg wash and then back in the flour. I kind of like a little bit more texture, but, uh, you know, that's just me. It's uh, controversy is something <laughs> I welcome, so... That's good. Now, I usually put a little bit of cornmeal. Cornmeal is a great thing. Now, if I was going to use cornmeal myself, I'd do flour, egg wash, and then the cornmeal. No, the and I would put that spice mixture into the cornmeal. Not oh, really yeah. yeah, that breaks it out. So, one hand was kind of uh, dry, the other hand's a little bit right. or wet, so to speak. So, we'll roll these guys in there, keeping the other hand dry. Just kind of do a three of them, I think, should do for, sure. for our purposes. You're not very hungry, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we got a whole lot more cooking to do today, right? Right. Good deal. Then we'll go right into the uh, into the skillet, which I hope is Other sizzling. Way. It is. There so you go. always um, <laughs> put your product away from you when you drop it down. That way the uh, splash doesn't get to you. It's got a little sizzle to all it. All right, I, I like go, to hear I would, that sizzle. That's I, part of a, the French drift in thing. If I'm not sizzling, it's not good. There you go. <laughs> I think you're right. If it had a little bit hotter, a nice sear or uh -huh. scald. Mm -hmm. I like just using a fork. Some people like tongs. I like using utensils like forks and spoons because they're more delicate on the food. Well, I guess so. Yeah, a lot of times when you go in there with a tong with a piece of fish or a green tomato that has a light crust, it'll fall off. So just kind of, you know, get in there and also force you to slow down. Like when you're cooking at home, you get to slow down and really get, you know, in Enjoy the skillet with your food. Enjoy what you're doing. See, it's a perfect little brown there. I love that little, little, uh, little brown. Go right in there. That one could use a little bit more. This one looks good. And chef's got to make a mess, right? Uh, it's, part of, it's part of living, it's bro. part of living. <laughs> so we'll, we'll um, you know, just kind of let these finish up. All right. In the meantime, we can uh, see Chutney's our chutney looking back good. here is looking nice. You see the uh, chunks are still in there. The aroma is good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we can talk about jumpers. Jumpers. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Jeremy and his frogs. And oh, oh, I'm going to go off camera. <laughs> I think that takes us over our quota. Oh, no, no. Rhoda brought these specifically for you, our nice. good friend Rhoda Anderson. She'll be here a little later. She said Jeremy had to have some frogs on set. So Too there cool. we go. Too cool. <laughs> but you be quiet. We're that, trying to cook. What are we going to do? <laughs> so frog legs, uh, I've got them right here. Got a nice plate of uh, jumper, so to speak. These guys, they usually come in like a little bundle. Do a little scary looking, Jeremy. Do a little dance with them. <laughs> You're into ballroom dancing, right? Yes, okay, yes. There we go. So One, two, three, four. Frog legs, um, they, they look kind of tenonous and fibrous, but the second you start cooking them, they really, really tenderize. So it doesn't take long in the skillet. This is the same process that we do the green tomatoes in. So we'll egg wash it. Uh-huh. We'll do a little egg wash and then on in there. And I like a lighter coating 
on the frog legs because they're just okay. so tender. So we'll just go egg wash flour this time. Now, if you were doing fried chicken, would you do that the same way? Well, egg wash than flour? Uh huh. Well, see, that's where I think it's more controversial than green tomato. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, all right, if I'm going to do a skillet fry as a black cast iron skillet, which really is the only way. Right. I would probably just go for the flour, egg wash, then flour. Okay. Because I, you know, just when you cook in a skillet, it's more tender and juicy. Sure. So when I go into like a deep fryer for fried chicken, I just do egg wash, then flour. It tends like all the extra breading in a deep fryer. Right. Kind of burns up and gets a little sure. better. Sure. I can. I, that hope that makes make sense. Good sense. Yeah. That makes good sense. Now you are king of Kentucky seafood. Mm. Do we consider frogs seafood? Is that well, part of the when you're doing your competition? Um, I would I would uh, argue that it's not, but uh, I would I wouldn't be scared to go into a competition with some frog legs. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if we're talking about aquaculture. You know, if you're they're raised frog legs, you just talk about aquaculture, y'all. When we're talking aquaculture, we're talking going down to the Pay Lake. That is <laughs> aquaculture in Pike County. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Let's take a look at our tomatoes. All right. Because I think they're getting good and brown now. We'll go back to the other side for a little extra. Maybe give them one more minute. They're starting to caramelize and get soft in the center too. Green tomatoes are usually about hard. When we talk caramelize, we're talking about developing the sugars and yeah. developing a little bit of that taste that's so summer. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of you, caramelize and nice and sweet too. <laughs> You're delusional. <laughs> <laughs> so frog legs, we're gonna treat the same way. Sprinkle into the skillet this way. Got a little bit of a bubbling going on. So we'll uh, raise the heat. Then lightly drop them in there for a light, shallow fry. I love these things. They are fun. I'm listening for the sizzle. Now are they going to jump and twick and, and twitch they, around? They will pop. <laughs> they tend to hold a lot of water, so be careful of that. If you guys have a little uh, little guard, you know, put on your skillet, that's right. a good idea. We always got to talk about safety in the kitchen, especially when you're with me. Are Anything we done with happen. the flour? We are done Let with the flour. Let me take it out of your Thank way. You very, very much. So green tomatoes are ready to come out of the skillet. And we'll put them on our little tray here to just kind of uh, soak up a little extra grease. But the important part is right when they come out of the skillet, we got to use a little spice mixture. All righty. Now that was the cumin and salt mm -hmm. and sugar. And uh, black pepper. And it smells so good, Jeremy. Now we call it escabiche, which is, you know, a fun little term. Escabiche. Escabiche. Now let's add the uh, mysterious spice mixture, the, the chef tip of the day. Right. The escabiche right on top of those green tomatoes. Now it sounds really fancy, but that was just easy. That was cumin and salt and sugar. And black pepper. And black pepper. So it's really easy. good stuff. Uh, you know what I also saw is you brought in some onion from the garden. I did. Nice spring onion. I'm going to grab one of those because I think this would be fantastic in the uh, country ham cream cheese. Onions are always Good one of idea. the first things that come up here in, here in Appalachia. It's something we do uh, what we call killed lettuce mm -hmm. where we're doing and some, some people say kilt lettuce. But it's where the green onions and, and we just kind of put them over with a little bacon grease over some, some salad greens and it is Come awesome. On, it tastes like spring. So we're doing that recipe next, right? <laughs> so. I don't know how long the folks at homes will stay with us. <laughs> <laughs> little Julianne on down the line with this. Uh, some people don't really know what to do with some of the tops. This is a great way to utilize them. Some people just go for these little bulbous right, onion parts. Right. Just oh no, on you thing. can't waste. You can't waste mm -hmm. them. I mean, you, right. you wait so long when, when you plan them. You wait so long for them to come along. You want to use every little bit. It's the first sign of what's to come when you see these guys pop up. So if it gets a little bit uh, big, you can cut it in half and then go back down. And we we think we can. We think we can. We think yeah, we can. Yeah, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it. Chug it. <laughs> That's right. Don't worry, I was Thomas the Tank when I first started doing it. <laughs> Now I get to be the steam engine, right? <laughs> so remember we had that uh, country ham and cream cheese going back there. Right. And we're just going to add this to that mixture. It's still whipping back there. You can hear it rolling. This will add a little color. And I can't wait to crunch into that freshly cut, you know, nice, nice. onion. I'm excited. 
Put them in a catch. Okay, let's see. Let me go from this angle. Now, most uh, smart people would turn off the mixer when they add stuff to it, but not me. <laughs> back to the jumpers, right? All right, we're back to the jumpers. <laughs> now, these, Joyce, I want a little lighter coating on. Right. Than the green tomato because I like that. So it's almost like that soft little pull you get when you just bite into it. It's, it's ooh, juicy. And that's what we want here is that soft little coating. So we turn them over, they're just, just now getting a little bit brown. And I'm using the fork too, really getting in there with it. You know, if they start breaking apart, that's okay. You're going to eat them anyway. But just flip them lightly. Man, these are soft. Love this. Did you take this off? I pulled it off just okay. for a second so we didn't get carried away with it. Hear that sizzle. Yeah, we're moving now. These things are jumping all over the place. We'll let those kind of finish up back there. Chutney's about where I w where we want it. Okay. Uh, if you notice, you still have these nice big chunks, chunks of, of peach. Peaches. Yeah. And that like little glazy, you can just kind of wipe on the plate. Uh -huh. It'll burn your nose with a little bit of vinegar, but it's no. I like that acidic nice, rot where yeah. I like canning and pickling. I like. Oh yeah. It's going to be delicious. Uh, and while the jumpers are going, we'll go ahead and stop our cream cheese and get that ready to plate. Ooey gooey mess. That's what we want. Ooey gooey mess. Ooey and gooey always precedes yummy yummy. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand any, any of that language. <laughs> so, once again here you've got the, the nice... Um, it's kind of cream. See all the big chunks of country ham? Right. And that onion adds a little, a little bit, bit of, of color. Green, yeah, and, and a little bit of bite. Can't wait to try that out. Yes, contrast. So we're going to act like we're going to kind of plate up here. Okay. And then we can put the jumpers on last minute. They can just right. jump on the plate. And you, then, you want you know, a big plate or a little plate? I'll let you choose. Let's well, do whatever. a big plate. All right. Here we go. Right. Feed me, Ashby. So plating is the, the, the fun part, right? Right. It's where you get to kind of use your canvas and make your art that's the part I like the most so a um, little bit of little bib adds a little nice bib lettuce has a, a, a very big history here in Kentucky really what is that it was uh, originally made in by a guy named Mr. Bib in Frankfurt you did not know this no <laughs> indeed it, that's why that it's so popular at Kentucky Derby is because that it was made the in fact the uh, Specific bib lettuce breed was about oh half a mile from where the old Capitol building is. So it's a great history. I, I can't wait to tell that story. Oh, do that again. What's that? The little well, you're fancy with your oh, your the, spoons. Okay. Well, <laughs> gosh, my culinary school teachers would just shoot me right now. But it, it, we had what's something called a three-sided football or a quenelle, and you kind of roll it off the spoons and. We, kinda, we'll go with three-sided football. Yeah, <laughs> three-sided football. <laughs> and it, it makes a nice little. You know, dollop. That Are we you gonna do. put another one on yeah. top? How about you put that one right on top of this one, and I'll top it. Starting to look good, huh? It always looks good. Yep. If Jeremy Ashby is in the house, it's good cooking. Yep. Good I hospitality. Am, I am in this barn, <laughs> and I'm not leaving either. So one more on top, and you know we gotta garnish with just a little bit more of that cream cheese. Make sure every bite gets some, and then. You know, we could even, you know, play around with maybe some more little bits of the bib lettuce and make it kind of trail up and out. Mm -hmm. Kind of fun. Okay. Very so, pretty. You and your towers. Yeah, I like height. It's fun. I like height too, but I'm challenged. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Those little honeysuckle flowers might well, be nice too. Yeah. We and I've that. got mint back here in the back if you like mint. Yeah, mint is a sign of hospitality. I'm glad good. you're here. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Maybe some honeysuckle here and there. I love the little sprigs and the way it kind of comes out like that. So now the dangerous part, getting the jumpers out of the skillet. They look good to me. This part might be messy, but we're going to attempt it. These guys are going right on there. Great little golden brown. Very pretty. And I love cast iron. I mean, this is the only way to do a shallow fry. Cast iron is it's just some things that just 
you're sh cooking in my grandma, one of my grandma's skillets, and, and that just makes it all the more special. Well, it's an honor. Whenever you use somebody else's skillet, it's almost like having them cook for you. You get a little, <laughs> little taste of that person. And all, uh, so we'll do a little, little jumpers kind of around. And we can make them, you know, crawl up the side of the dish too, if you like. Be now, fun. This, this is all up to you. You need some room in there, a little huh? Crate of here. Oh, fancy. Have a, little, have a little fun. Whenever you go to a zoo restaurant and patio in Lexington, you always have little creativity mm -hmm. going on. A little wild stuff. <laughs> I'll take that one back. That one's for me. I get to have uh, it. You guys get to have this one. Picky, picky. Yeah, I know, I know. So now, we can finish with our, our chutney. All right. Now that was peaches mm -hmm. and a little pepper. We have uh, peaches, little red pepper in here. Um, we have, you have a spoon over there by chance. I can get you one right, right here. Thank you. A spoon. Perfect. So we've got nice fresh peaches that are just down to where they're this lovely little, you know, just big chunks and still glistening and Let kind of smell. caramelized. Oh, and they're so pretty. And they, they came out light, like you said. The mm -hmm. color is very pretty. Right, the texture's there, the color's there. I know the flavor's there. Um, it's a, such an easy recipe. are very reasonable right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. When, they, when they hop in season, they're ready to go. Very, oh, so pretty. Yeah, this is just good old good food here. And you want to get some of that good juice around the plate, too. All right. And, uh, you know, a couple little of these fun guys. This is kind of your trademark, the yeah, little pea, pea shoots. Yeah, these are cool. Daikon sprouts or pea shoots. I just have the little, little bite and a little crunch right at the top. You know, yeah, some people don't appreciate pretty, it, some people do. Yeah, it gives it a lot of color and a lot of fun. Almost like confetti on the plate. Mm -hmm. It's like a party. Right. And anytime I'm with you, it's always a party. Well, it's, <laughs> it's been a party. And uh, so here's some jumpers, some maters, some peach chutney, some country ham. All good stuff. All the stuff I like to eat. All the stuff I like <laughs> to eat, too. Let's pour up some sweet tea and finish this up. Sounds like a plan. All right. Honeysuckle sweet tea, Jeremy how did, you, how did you make this? We went out and we picked the honeysuckle blossoms. We tried to get as many of the white blossoms as we could, but at this late in the season, sometimes you have to get the little buttery yellow ones too. I just we, love having a hot woman bring me flowers. It, it's, it's just like, <laughs> it's just like going out and uh, and hiding out and picking these flowers. It, it's a lot of fun. Now you've got me off track. <laughs> so what we did was we picked these. We made two. We made two cups of sugar and one cup of water. Boiled it down into a simple syrup, just like you would for any sweetened tea. Now what this, and then this was set overnight, just in a mason jar. I used enough of the uh, honeysuckle flowers. I crammed it in there like you would if you were making sauerkraut. Just as many honeysuckle flowers as I could get in there. Crammed it in there, let it set overnight. That helps the flavor to mellow. That is cool. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the syrup. Instead of using sugar, so we're using this honeysuckle syrup. You reckon that's enough, Mr. Ashby? Keep going, keep going. You're pushing your luck, <laughs> brother. <laughs> that looks good. Is that good? Yeah. Now you see that I haven't strained this out. Some people strain this out. I got this recipe from Hot Hot Fish in Birmingham. That's a lot of syrup. <laughs> ah, but you're sweet. It'll we be like all it right. We like it sweet in the south, right? And then I just, plain tea, Louisiana tea is one of my favorites. I think it has a clean, crisp taste. Nothing says summer like fresh brewed iced tea. It is the house wine of the south. You're just saying summer to me. It's beautiful. Mm, there I we love go. Love the jars. I love everything about it. Mint. You know, I got to have a little bit of mint. Everything goes better with mint. I think I love it when the mint tickles your nose. Oh, very nice. So there we have it. Some tea. We're gonna try these tomatoes, Ashby. All right. Cut in there, and can you get in there with the fork? Are you gonna of need a knife. I can. Just so, go straight down and just destroy this dish, cause. <laughs> We should have a little bit of tomato and a little bit of that cream cheese and ham. This is for you. What do you think about that? Oh. That work? Can I keep you? 
<laughs> well, you are just a peach. We got a little peach. <laughs> Uh, thanks we're, for thanks for letting me cook with you. This has been a lot of fun. We're closing out the fifth edition at FriendsDriftIn.com. Mm -hmm. You can go for recipes on my website. You can visit Jeremy on his website, Sunny Side Up. Listen to him on WLAP Saturday mornings at 11. Visit Acer Restaurant and Patio yeah. in Lexington. He'll show you a good time, great hospitality. And as we always say on Friends Drift In, share the giggles. Share the giggles. <laughs>